going on, guys? It is Brian and Jack from Simple Man's Comics, and we have another great episode of the Bolo Show for you tonight. For those that don't know, Bolo stands for Be On The Lookout, and this is that list that comes out every new comic book day where we cover those first appearances, that reader buzz, variant buzz, and then, of course, Jack offers a long-term play at the end. But before we get into the list, it's important to let you guys know this show is brought to you from SlabbedHeroes.com. Nick Dwortman at SlabbedHeroes.com. Check them out. You want that guaranteed 9 8 at a great price? Slabbed Heroes has it. You want some incentive or some exclusive variants? Slabbed Heroes has that as well. But either way, Nick at Slabbed Heroes, check out that site. And Jack, how was your new comic book day? It was a good one. Um, yeah, I've been battling uh, getting sick. I had a uh, strep throat and the flu, so I've kind of battled through that, but uh, uh, kind of getting a little better today. So it. it it was good, but it was a less active uh, new comic book day for me compared to other weeks. Yeah, mine was, was actually pretty busy. We uh, work has settled in now. We're past the holiday mode, so now everyone expects you to do something at work or something like that. But on another note, family, we're getting packed up. We are actually going on vacation this weekend, heading south down to good old Orlando or Kissimmee, Florida. We're going to be spending the week at Disney World. So that is one announcement we want to make next week. We will not have a live premiere of the Bolo Show, but we have a special episode for you. We are going to do a year in review recap. It's been just over a year now since we started doing this Bolo Show. So we have a special episode where we're going to recap the past year of the Bolo Show, which will be published at the same time, 9 o'clock, next Thursday night on Simple Men's Comics YouTube channel. Jack, you saw some of that, right? Yeah, and I got to tell you, um, don't just assume that that's a throwaway uh, episode. If you're at all a, a fan of the show, if you've been watching the show over the year um, that we've been doing it, it's a really cool look back at kind of like how far we've come, the different stages of the Bolo beard. You got to see that. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, you know, all the different set designs that Brian's put together for us on the show. But uh yeah, definitely be sure to check that out and uh, let us know some feedback on it if you like that kind of thing. And with that, we're going to get into this list. So I'm going to bring the list up on the screen right now. As always, like we said at the beginning, we have that first appearance, which is a little light this week. Then we had some reader buzz. The variant buzz section was actually a little, little heavier this week than we've seen in the past weeks. And then, of course, we have the long-term play. And with that, let's get right into it, starting with those first appearances. Then, first appearance we have, we only have one, and we're talking about Batgirl number 43, which is what? The first appearance of Opus, right, Jack? Right, new villain in the, um, the Batgirl book. Um, th this book sold out immediately at Midtown as soon as kind of like, I think the first person who put it out might have been like the Key Collector app when they do their kind of like look at the, the following week's comics. And you mentioned it's a light week for first appearances, Brian. This is a prime example. I don't know this character, so I don't know good, bad, and different. But you just see the reaction in the market is an example of what happens sometimes, right? So there's, this is the only major first appearance. There's some other like teams or a newer version of this that some people have talked about. But really, this was the only true new character that was available pre-New um, Comic Book Day. And because the word got out maybe two or three days before New Comic Book Day, um, we saw the book sell out at Midtown there was a slight above cover price spike on eBay, but then what happens? The book was easy to get on, on new comic book day. Um, there were more copies available at diamonds. So stores were able to restock kind of preemptively. And now that it's dropped down to a cover price book, which is what it, it's only new comic book day today. We're filming this a day in advance as we tell you guys every week. Um, so, you know, all that happened within a span of what, like three days, two days. So, um, market fluctuation happens. That's why you've got to kind of pause yourself and be careful not to react too much because, you know, there was a time where, you know, you, you maybe could have gone and jumped and grabbed 20 copies of this and think you're going to, you're going to do so well. And it just doesn't turn out that way. Yeah. That's just another key example. Why we say just cause it's on the list doesn't mean it's going to make you rich. We talk yes. about all types of comics, but it's important to let you guys know what the first appearances are. And then some of these are, like we said, there's a section for it. It's exactly what it is. It's reader buzz. But either way, we're going to move into that reader buzz section right now. 
starting with probably one of the big issues from DC Comics this week, and that was that big Wonder Woman 750 issue, right? Right, and um, now you, it's not the long-term play of the week, but it was strongly considered for the long-term play of the week. And you read it, you said you didn't like it. Um, and I think that it's reader buzz because it's one of those books that everybody who's been reading Wonder Woman is going to pick up. Um, anybody who's been a DC Comics reader, right? They're going to pick it up. It's a, it's a landmark issue, 750. And, I've and talked, Wonder Woman 84 is coming out. Right, and I've talked previously about how I think that landmark issues are important. They always carry cachet in the comics books community. So Ninja Turtles 100, Detective Comics 1000, um, Action Comics 1000. These are always going to be books that people are going to go back to and they're going to want to have in their collection. Furthermore, I think they did an amazing job uh, kind of grabbing various artists from that depicted Wonder Woman during various times. There's so many good variants, which is why this also shows up in the variant buzz section. Not to mention interior art. There's a bunch of stories with different artists on the interior also. So while I, people may be down on the story, um, my pitch to why it's a decent long-term play is I don't think it was ordered as heavy. There weren't as many store variants, certainly, as some of the other landmark issues, right? Yeah, this had a higher MSRP, right? What was it, nine ninety nine? Yeah, nine ninety nine. Just like, just like, uh, you know, Detective Comics and the other ones, right? Um, but you have a, a, the high MSRP, so it's a five dollar per book buy in for for an LCS at minimum. Uh, could be could be six depending on their account. Could be slightly like four fifty, but either way, it's it's in that in that range. Um, it's expensive. It's an expensive buy in for a shop, and then you have the vast multitude of covers. So even if a shop wanted to order two or three of each cover, they would have a large number of books um, to put an order in. Uh, and when you're talking about carrying for the shelf, I think these books are going to dry up. Um, I do think, like we've talked about previously with these type of issues, there may be a time where like the large orders of them, like Midtown Comics, you may see this on a 75% off list. I very well could see that. And that's the time to grab it. But I think projecting long-term um, with the fact that Wonder Woman is so iconic now, my two young daughters have grown up huge Wonder Woman fans. You mentioned the Wonder Woman movies. Um, I think that Bolin cover, I think the... Um, Frizzin cover is freaking hot. The, the Frizzin cover, uh, the the uh, Hughes... Um, and that Jim Lee pencil incentive, I mean, yeah, the for Jim a $10 Lee, book. Uh, the Jim Lee regular cover. I think yep. there's a J. Scott. Um, all of those, I think, are going to be chased down, down the line. J. Scott hasn't done a ton of like accessible Wonder Woman. So uh, I think that all of those books are going to end up drying up over time and people, and a couple of them may pop. Yeah. I think my favorite J. Scott Wonder Woman he's done recently was that um, when he was doing those Harley Little Black book covers. Yep. I knew exactly the one you were going to go to. Yeah. But yeah, I was going to say, I think this is one that you might be able to find in some of those sales later on. But if you want it right now, one thing I'd also check with, especially with LCS is, is sometimes they run a deal where they sell you the lot with all the covers, M maybe minus the incentive, of course, but sometimes if you want all the covers, you can pick them up cheaper in a lot. Just check with the LCS. But either way, I read it. It was like, I forget how many, it was like six or seven stories. And the one I liked the most was the, the Margaret Bennett. Um, of course, former writer for Power Rangers, but um some of the stories I didn't like, but then I also liked the the artist that was doing the interior art for it. But either way, like you said, monumental monumental issue for seven fifty, and there's going to be collectors out there that want it in their collection. Then the next one we're going to talk about is probably another. This is probably the big one of the big books of the week, and that is that Batman Beyond number forty. Right, this is a really a funny trend um, when you look at the sales secondary market wise of this you're getting like ten dollars eleven dollars a book twenty five dollars for the combo of a and b um we finally get the reveal of who who is batwoman beyond um it is spoiler alert if anybody wants to mute or do whatever they want to do but it is who we thought it was um and it was uh so you get dick grayson's daughter um so all those batman beyond 25 are spiking those 35 37s are hot again but this is really funny, Brian. Um, and I know you and I haven't been huge fans. We're huge fans of this series. That's the funniest thing about some of the negativity we received for 
thinking that these prices people are paying are more FOMO and like social media influenced um, kind of pricing because it just doesn't align with the market. But that doesn't mean we don't love the series, right? We've both been advocates of the series and the character. Um, but this is another prime example, like in the long run, right? This is just a reveal. This isn't a first appearance. This isn't 25 is her first appearance as a character. 20, 20 37 is her first appearance as Bat Woman Beyond. Um, 40 is just where we find everything out. I think it's hot today because it's the most talked about comic that was released today. We kind of knew and there was a lot of headlines for it. Yeah, so we knew this was going to happen. Um, but will it be hot? You know, a couple months from now, you know, it just doesn't have enough to me for it to be anything more than a popular reader buzz book. But it may be a ten dollar book forever because of it just being such a strong reader buzz book. Right, and then the next one we're talking about the reader buzz. We talked about this on the last call show, but now we get Al Ewing from Immortal Hulk taking over writing duties with Guardians of the Galaxy number one. This had a bunch of different covers for it. There's a bunch of regular price covers. Then you had some incentive variants along those lines where we've seen it now where Marvel's not just doing the blank color variants, but they're doing like the blank color color with like the pattern. Like this one, we get the purple with almost the, the starry space, space night right yeah yeah which is gonna look um it really to me evokes uh there was an old cover 90s cover i think it was from like one of the marvel tales kind of run somebody will hook me up in the comments with the what it is where it was captain marvel and then the male captain marvel and then you've got thanos kind of connecting in the star so it kind of evokes that i tell you what there's going to be some great blanks drawn on that but it's like you and i have talked about man it's like a one in 200 variant brian so it's like i mean i've seen stores trying to sell it for 160 150 bucks i don't know my lcs is my shops that that follow us that watch the show that are listening to the audio version let us know are you guys able to sell these high ratio books for a decent price i gotta be honest with you i've seen a lot of that blue thor blank on shops, walls, in their pictures, in their Instagram posts. I'm not seeing the demand to pay that kind of money that people are asking for, for these books. So it's real interesting. Um, a cheaper variant to go to the different end of the spectrum. Um, a book that made the variant buzz list because it sold out at large retail and for kind of good reason. Um, but I wonder if it isn't for a bad reason. Is the Marvel's X variant of, uh, of this issue, which- The Scon variant? The Scon variant. The Scon's a great artist. A lot of retail uh, shops have used him. He was the reason I picked up some totally awesome Hulk issues back in the day. <laughs> right. Great cover artist. And this is an awesome depiction of the ultimate of the X, uh, the Marvel's X kind of version of Black Bolt. But I wonder if people didn't look at this and think Vox and kind of jump on that train when that's not that's not who's on the cover, which is again where people have criticized Don Cates. For the character design of that character kind of so strongly resembling um, that character. But either way, um, it, it, it's a cool cover. It sold out. I don't think it'll be anything necessarily on the secondary market. But it continues the trend of these Marvel's X variants selling out. I think retailers have just rebelled against ordering these open order Marvel variants. They just don't want to get stuck with them. Yeah, going back to that highly priced so-called blank variant type it reminds me of the stuff you always see, like people at art museums and they pay how many thousands for a painting and it's basically just a blue square or something and you don't ever understand it. That's how I feel about some of these Marvel variants. But I'm sure there's some collectors out there that maybe have, like we've talked about before, a, a sketch or something in mind that they want to put to it. It's just not my cup of tea. But I also wonder maybe if Marvel was able to move the needle a little bit more on some of those because we're getting we're on the precipice of con season. We got what C two E two coming up. There's a lot of talent going to be there. Do you think some of these are being sold more than they were that because people are buying them up, knowing they're going to take them to conventions? Yeah, I mean, I think that's where the allure of them is. It just it becomes an ROI thing. Like because we're in con season, I'm seeing a lot of solicitations um, for say private signings and things and shout out to our channel sponsor kevin fields from frankie's had this great post on facebook about don't always trust what you see private signings sometimes you're just paying somebody to stand in line for you 
um, and directing people to who to look for for private signings. But <coughs> excuse me, but um, you know when you start to factor in the fees that are associated, it, 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 it starts asking so many questions now. Like, are you the one who's going to go get the autograph yourself? If you're going to pay somebody to facilitate that autograph and pay for it to then get graded and pay for it to get witnessed and, and then shipped back to you, you start to add so much expense. Um, I think any of these high ratio blanks could cost you upwards of $500. Now, if it's for PC and it's for you, that's awesome. But I don't know if you're going to spend that kind of money, you could buy original art. So I don't even know if that's the best use of your money, even if it's just for you. I mean, do what you want to do with your money. But I just don't think I don't I think a lot of these retailers that have these sitting on their shelves at one hundred and fifty dollars, two hundred dollars, one hundred and sixty. I see a lot. Um, I think they're going to have a hard time getting anywhere near ratio. I wouldn't be surprised, Brian, because dealers have a hard time letting go of those high ratio variants cheap. I wouldn't be surprised if you're not in a, a comic shop six, seven years from now and you still see some of those blanks sitting up on walls. Yeah. But the last book we're going to talk about on the reader buzz section is that Ruins of Ravencroft Dracula number one. We're starting to see a lot of these Ravencroft one shots. This one had that regular cover as well as a Greg Land variant. Yeah, and it's another one sold out at most major retailers. I think, I think these books were just under ordered. Um, they've been kind of beloved by the reading community. Uh, and we talked about these pre FOC. We, we saw this coming. Um, we said, we've said for over a year, horse hot, we said these stories and we talked about the room that Marvel has to go with the Ravencroft concept and uh, what they can do with it. So, and there's also kind of a fervor for this Dracula in specific for like, we're about to get into Morbius and we're about to get into um blade and moon knight into all of these dark characters and I, all of these dark characters are kind of getting their day so yeah, um, it's like it we had the zombie me. trend but now we're getting into the vampire trend again yeah it really didn't surprise me that this book sold out so that's the reader buzz section real quick do us a favor click that thumbs up button for us and let us know in the comments which books did you guys pick up this week even if they are on the bolo list always looking for great reads and that's also how jack adds stuff to the list if there's no buzz out there from social media it doesn't get on the list so with that we're gonna go right into the variant buzz section and then the first book we're going to talk about on the variant buzz section is red sonya age of chaos number one but this is the Derek chu variants Right, it was a few different versions. This was essentially the preview variant. This was the variant that they put out as kind of the image to advertise the series. And it's gorgeous. Right, which is why I think it was popular. Because it, we talk often that like the the cover to get is usually now, it used to be get the variants, right? When the variant craze was at its highest. Now that's kind of died down. And the thought is, well, get cover A because when they option a series or something like that, that's the image that they show. But it's funny with all the press that Dynamite did, even though that doesn't really apply to a publisher like Dynamite, um, although Dynamite does create their own books, this isn't one of them. They, when they were putting the, all the advertising out for this, they used this Derek Chu image. And it's, this is also a series of variants. So like there's another one for issue two. Um, I assume they'll continue beyond that. But yeah, gorgeous variant, gorgeous cover. Um, and you have like a one in 11, I think, sneak peek virgin there's a one in 20 monochromatic um it just it, it i think there's a one in 10 regular so you have a one in 10 and a one in 11 um but so you see have three different versions our versions um it's it's one of those things where like most of these dynamite variants they're all going for like half ratio um having said that we talked about dynamite on um, three up, three down, and the fact that a lot of these dynamite um, kind of brothers, Red Sonia Vampirella covers, they dry up over time, and then, then they become almost ghosts, and you can kind of command your price. I think this is one of those books where it'll be in, it'll be heavily available as the store retailers who created uh, exclusive variants have their copies, um, and once they sell out, the copies dry up over time. Keep an eye out for this one because this is one that could creep up in value as time goes by. Yeah, one thing that surprised me, especially as I was preparing everything for the show tonight, like you said, we talked about 
Three Up, Three Down, Red Sonja. We talked about how there's some great artists out there for those covers, especially the Frizen and the Perio variants or the regular covers. Cover A for this is sold out at Midtown. Yep. And I was like, I was actually surprised about this. This, I'm, I will tell you, this issue has ungodly amount of covers all together. And then, of course, there's some uh, exclusive variants. But we also, our channel sponsor, frankiescomics.com, has an exclusive for issue number two that you can get right now. And it's by that up-and-coming artist that everyone's, I won't even say up-and-coming. It's kind of like rising star artist, Peach Momoko. And that's a gorgeous cover. And those are available on frankiescomics.com right now. Yeah, and, you know, one of those things, like we, we've talked about before, uh, is different markets. And this seems to be a market that is kind of growing in popularity. And this is a cover art driven market. So Dynamite is one of the very few companies that you'll see where cover A's will actually command variant prices. So you mentioned the Perio cover being sold out. That cover is gorgeous. And it will kind of stand up to any of the variants that they released. And before we move on, I also want to mention, shout out to Dynamite Comics, uh, the Red Sonia official Instagram page actually liked and commented on the Bolo list this week. So Shout out to Dynamite Comics. We appreciate that. Boom goes the dynamite. <laughs> but sticking with that whole Robert E. Howard universe, the next warp on the variant buzz is Conan Serpent's War number four. This is the variance for that issue. Right. And it, I think this is a twofold thing, the reason why these variants were in demand. First off, I think ever since that ungodly Finch variant went to just astronomical heights, I think everybody's been trying to duplicate that since issue two. It's not going to happen. We talked about why that Finch variant popped. That's because Finch plus Moon Knight equals money. Yeah. You can go ahead yeah, and write that down. We even talked about that in the last call. Right. Write that down. All my rookies out there, all my newbies, Finch plus Moon Knight equals money. If you see it solicited and it's an incentive, grab it up. But um, these did have Moon Knight being on the cover going for them. So I think that is why they sold out. Moon Knight is incredibly popular. Um, he's like the hipster character in that like if you're cool and you're in comics you like Moon Knight right now which I know is going to really piss off my OG Moon Knight fans who have loved Moon Knight forever but um, you know it's the cool character to like in comics for sure then the next one we're going to talk about in that variant buzz is that Gung Ho number two this is that cover B that homage variant right yeah and you know it wasn't the only cool homage that got released this week there was also the Edgar Allan Poe snifter of terror number four um, which had that cool Starenko Hulk Annual 1 homage. But all of the Edgar Allan Poe books have some cool homage. That's, that's pretty much what they've kind of leaned on for variant sales. Yeah. But um, Gung Ho had a cool Star Wars number one image. Um, a- anytime you kind of homage such a classic like Star Wars, and the Star Wars fans are going to pick up on it, um, especially from a, such a small press book, it's kind of bound to sell out. So. It got some like late attention. It sold out. Uh, not a lot of sales right now, but uh, one that you could see over time kind of rise. Yeah, but this next one we're going to talk about got a lot of attention from the jump, and that is that Atlantis Attacks number one, that Inhyuk Lee variant, right? Right. We're talking Inhyuk Lee. We're talking high ratio incentive. And again, we're talking about a series. How many stores are going to order a ton of Atlantis rising, right? I mean, I know there's a fervor right now of people wanting to see um, Namor in the movies. We know that, right? But at the same point, um, it has never translated into comic sales ever in Marvel's history. Namor um, was a classic character back, obviously, in like the Golden Silver Age. But in modern times, we haven't seen um, we haven't seen any sort of success from Neymar. He's actually been sporadically used, if anything. So this is purely a cover art and inhuckly heat demand book. This is a book that um, was kind of an easy to see coming uh, popular book. Yeah, especially like you said, cover artists and then probably scarcity about how many were actually ordered, but gorgeous cover. I mean, inhuckly, you know, he's going to bring it every time, but either way, I didn't pick it up, though. <laughs> uh, you know, it's one of those things where if you didn't get it today, you're not going to get it because, I mean, your most recent sale is already like 130. Um, and you're talking about a book that went for like 60 
and then the next sale was 130. Um, and then now the, the, like the active copy on eBay is at like $80 with six days left. Um, so God knows what that could go for. Um, this is just like we've seen with those Virgin, uh, 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 future fight books that he did anytime you have low printed in Hyuk Lee there can be some crazy things happening on eBay. I was thinking future fight but for some reason I kept wanting to say fear factor <laughs> <laughs> little Joe Rogan yeah but this next book we're going to talk about I was actually surprised I fully expected this to be your long-term play and this is the Ghostbusters year one this is the one in 10 and Cine variant it's funny um I thought about it it's been a long time since I have picked a incentive as a long-term play. Um, and I certainly would have focused on the incentive with this one versus the regular cover. I like this book in just in general. Um, I think that it is the cool concept. If you haven't heard us talk about it on the last call show, it's a mini series where they're basically going to go each issue follows one member of the Ghostbusters in their time after the Ghostbusters movie. Um, how they kind of deal with fame and everything that comes with um, them now being superheroes, essentially, to the people of New York. And uh, issue number one is Winston Zedmore. But I just, you know, Ghostbusters comics don't get a lot of attention. But Ghostbusters is in the news a lot right now with the upcoming movie this summer. So I think that if there's a crossover success... Um, now maybe the time for that to happen. Either way, we've seen successful Ghostbusters in the past with these ratio variants where not a lot are ordered. Stores aren't ordering 10 copies of this book to get that that uh, incentive. And right now the incentive is selling for about $20. So about twice the uh, asking price. I actually expected it to go for more. This is one I thought had a chance to be like a $40, $50 book right out the gate. Um, but there's not a lot available. So it'll be interesting to see where it goes from here. Yeah, I think it's one of those ones that would go for a lot more, but even with the new Stranger Things Ghostbusters trailer, <laughs> like we like to call it, but like you mentioned, there's just not that much attention around Ghostbusters franchise right now. So, but and if they had better cover art rather than the cartoony, it's not that the cover art's bad, but the cartoony style it never seems to command the pricing that say like the ultra realistic painted style if they would have gotten a Nemetic, right yeah yeah gallagher um well i was gonna say like a Derek chu style where it's yeah. like i'm not talking about Derek chu but somebody lower but somebody of that style but like gallagher's perfect who's done work with idw um yeah, he's in a bunch of exclusive transformer bands right you know gorgeous if you, if you had that kind of look on a ghostbusters book i think you could have had a, a, even more success with this book, but still, um, you know, sales at 1.5 times ratio, um, asking prices now being two to 2.5 times ratio. You can't complain about that. And with that, I thought it was his long-term play, but it wasn't. And we're going to get into his long-term play right now. And this really simply, folks, is just a double down. Um, we've talked on this channel about Dylan Brock ad nauseum. Um, as popular a character as there gets in comics right now, as far as when we talk about modern stories, the characters have been created uh, of recent years. Um, obviously, coming from Donny Cates, um, Donny Cates, everything he does seems to get a ton of attention. And the whole saga of when is Dylan going to become whatever Dylan is has captivated readers for all of 2019. <clears throat> As this comes out now, um, it didn't receive a ton of fanfare. Um, it almost was under the radar. Now, I'm sure that the printing numbers of this book will still be very respectful because it is a, a Venom book. But these Web of Venom books that came out during the Absolute Carnage series seem to have this like tie-in. We need to pay attention to it. This seems to be coming tailed after the fact. Having said that, we get even more in depth. It's told in that, even though it's not written by Donny Cates, it's told in that Donny Cates style of giving us a little bit more of Dylan, but not giving us the whole thing. Um, furthermore, we get more Normie and the Normie Dylan relationship, kind of being as you and I have compared the dark version of Super uh, Sons. Super Sons, right? Um, it gives you that 
Damian and Jonathan Kent feel. And to me, um, we did a lot of talking this week in filming the video that's going to come after this, where you're the next video you're going to see on the channel, the Morbius back issue Bolo edition, where we talked about back in the day, there was a lot of like characters, first appearance, first solo story, uh, first, you know, solo book. This could kind of one day be looked at as like the first Dylan solo book or solo story. Um, the, uh, you know, this could have that sort of catch. Either way, it's going to be important in a really this pick as a long-term play really comes down to how you view Dylan. If you view Dylan as a long-term character, as somebody we're going to be talking about for years and years to come, then I think that this is definitely a book that will be one that it's not going to be like a first appearance. It's not going to be that major, major key, but it's going to be a book that's going to be necessary to be in collections of those who are collecting Dylan books. Furthermore, you get the double down of the fact that you're doing the same thing with Normie, who I can't remember what year that whole ASM 798 craze was. Help me out in the comments, but I think we're looking at like 2015. Normie had that same level of kind of just captivation of the comic community that year that we saw with, with Dylan this year. Um, so them being kind of partnered up together, you're playing with both fan bases. The symbiote community is so big. Um, I think that this is a book where it's going to, it's going to kind of be looked at like a one shot. It's going to be overlooked, but it could be something that down the road we feel like is mandatory for collectors of either of these characters. And because there's no store variants and uh, you know, I don't think it's a book that's going to be just crazy overprinted i think that it could be one that dries up because you cannot underestimate how many symbiote collectors exist in there and even better than that there's a one in 25 incentive for it and i think that that one in 25 incentive is a book that you got to keep an eye out for because that's one of those books where maybe today it's not selling for some insane amount of money but we may look at this book come six months a year down the road and go wait a minute that's selling for what I cannot tell you how many times that has happened with Venom variants. And I think Dylan is just that next level. I don't even think people realize, but Dylan hasn't been on a ton of covers. So, you know, you've only got so many covers and there's only a couple variant covers of his. And, and here's an incentive where he's featured on the cover. And I think long-term that could be something. All it takes is the right article or the right video from a YouTuber who says, you know, hey, have you, if you noticed this and the, a new comic community pays attention to it, they're running out to buy it. Um, so I think if you look long term and you look at all these different books that were released this week with Wonder Woman 7, 750, um, the Ghostbusters book that you mentioned, um, and even Batman Beyond 40, which I don't like to pick books that are hot this week as the long term play of the week because that, that's a book I'd probably be flipping. Um, but, you know, I really think that this is the book long term where it's, it's kind of the blue chip. It's the book that has the, the safest pick, the best chance. Of, of being something down the road. So yeah, let us know in the comments, what do you think about Jack's long-term play? Do you agree with it? Do you not agree with it? If you don't agree with it, tell us why, of course. But either way, it's your collection, it's your money. Buy what you like, that's what we always say. And Jack's just putting it out there. But great long-term play as always, Jack. And with that being said, that's kind of close out to the Bolo list. But real quick, like he said, we do have that Morbius back issue. That's five key issues that you're going to be on the lookout for. I know we keep teasing it, but Patreon members right now, that video is available up on Patreon for you guys to watch. It will be published here very soon for all the rest of the channel subscribers. If you aren't a subscriber, please consider doing so because we're going to have a series of Morbius keys and different back issues leading up to that theatrical release, right, Jack? Absolutely. And that's just the beginning. Um, this is, it will give us some feedback as we get into this Morbius series about how you guys are enjoying it, um, whether you're enjoying it, if there's anything you like to tweet, because we've had a lot of requests from you guys. And we listen to you guys out there in the Supplements Comics family for kind of these character profiles. So we thought it was timely to do Morbius because the movie's coming out in July and the trailer just hit. And it's a very talked about character. But we've had requests for Moon Knight. We've had requests for several X characters. Um, you know, let us know whether you think that there's some value in these. We're going to do a five-part video. We're going to, part number one, which you're going to see on the channel very soon, is the top, as Brian mentioned, the top five books to get. But there, we're going to hit variants. 
we're going to hit dollar bin books. Uh, we're going to hit some first appearances. So stay tuned for that. And as this series goes on, let us know. Let us know if you're liking this and this is something we should do further. Yeah, and I do want to take the time, as Jack says, we do listen to you guys, the viewers, and read your comments. And one of the things that we hopefully have addressed recently is the audio issues we were having. Everyone was commenting about the audio issues. I know everyone's talking about Jack's mic. I will say we did get Jack a new mic. We do have Jack a new pop filter. But I also want to say I don't think that was all that I take as much blame for it. I think we had software issues. But we just want to be transparent with you. We were aware of it. We were troubleshooting it, trying to fix it. I think we got it resolved. Let us know in the comments. Do you think the audio is better than what it has been? But we love every each and every one of you guys. That's why we always talk about how it's a community. That's why integrity and community are the most paramount things to us as Zipper Man's Comics between Jack and I. We do have a new episode of The Last Call tomorrow night. Next week, we won't have those because I will be on vacation, but we will have content up in its place. We got a great interview with Mad Cave Studios author of Over the Ropes, Jay Sandlin. That will be coming out. Fun discussion if you're a wrestling fan. Definitely want to watch that. And you need to be picking that up if you haven't been reading Over the Ropes, right? Oh, absolutely. Great series. Uh, fun book. Uh, another, another great guy to talk to. I always get excited when we get to talk about wrestling. But whether you're a wrestling fan or not, you'll enjoy this book. It's some good storytelling. And if you're not a wrestling fan, it may just kind of indoctrinate you a little bit into wrestling culture. And you never know. You may enjoy it. And we talk about another book he's got coming out in March. But we'll let you watch the video to figure yes. that out. With that being said, this is Brian Jack from Superman's Comics. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you click that thumbs up button. And we'll see you in the next video.